Welcome to the WordPress Photography Podcast, the podcast for photographers who want to learn how to get the most out of WordPress to grow their photography business. You don't need to be a geek to understand WordPress. Settle back and listen as we show you how. Now, here's your host, Scott Wyden Kivowitz. Why can't you find good photography jokes? They haven't been developed yet. Welcome to episode 97. My name is Scott wyden and I'm joined by my guest, Alex Vita. Alex, welcome to the show. I'm glad to, to finally have you on. Been trying to get you on for a while, so we're doing it. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Nice to be here. Alex is the man behind Foreground Web. He started many years ago with photography, and it's been through the struggles of finding work. He did a bunch of weddings, had a portrait studio, and learned to build photography websites on his own. Since then... He became a successful freelance website designer who has helped over 200 photographers build their online presence through a custom designed website and has offered consultations for photographers to maintain their sites all on their own. Not only does Alex have a great eye for web design, the talent to put those designs into effect, but he understands photographers and enjoys WordPress. So perfect guest for the show. <laughs> Well, what do you know? And you've reminded me that my camera is gathering dust on my shelf over there. So <laughs> just doing websites uh, now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should set a reminder to like once a month, just pick it up, I go should. out and to, to dust them off, yeah, so to yeah. speak. Um, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> so, so what's going on with you? I'm, you've always got something going on. I know you have a course. Did you just launch it? Or is it still in, it's in the launch still process? In the launch process. It's a course on blogging, specifically written for photographers. Um, I just see it as a an underutilized tool that many photographers don't know how to right. use. And uh, I'm writing a course on that. It's text only, and I plan to launch it in a couple of weeks as of recording this. And yeah, awesome. just doing other other projects, other articles. Always busy with uh, web design services as well. That make, takes up most mm -hmm. of my time. And yeah, exciting. Awesome. Yeah, you know, so I'll be sure to link to the, uh, the course in the show notes, at least if it's not, um, if it's not launched um, by the time that this airs, I'll at least have a link to where people can learn more about it for when it does launch. Okay. Um, so be sure, please um, make sure you get me that link well, so I can include in the show notes. Um, so uh, blogging on that topic, um, I also teach um, a little bit of a blogging strategy in one of my own courses on lead generation. And part of that process is SEO. And SEO is a topic I feel like it gets whispered about in the, in the industry. I mean, we have people like Corey Potter who are pushing hard for photographers to get better at it. And he does a really good job at teaching it. Um, and I feel like it, it, it randomly pops up in the foreground, pun intended, um, uh, like around the big trade shows. Like there's, there's usually the same person constantly talking about the same specific SEO tactic, which may be outdated at this point at all the big trade shows. Um, and there's, and it's, I feel like the industry might be in some ways um, too focused on, on SEO and and, and not so much about the user experience. I feel like there's a fine line between the two. Um, so I'm wondering what your take is on SEO versus user experience, um, because I, I never hear user experience discussed at trade shows or yeah, most events, I, really. I have quite a weird experience and relationship with SEO. Um, because there's high demand in SEO stuff, I added i think a couple of years ago an seo audit on my website as a service and i got requests from photographers and the feeling every time is that they were coming to me with an obsession for seo when they were having huge many other mistakes on their website uh, um, the design was ugly functionality problems uh, performance issues, everything to do with user experience, but they were trying to work on SEO only. That was their main focus. And I don't know, it, it got me thinking, why are photographers so obsessed? And the conclusion I came to was that SEO is kind of is simpler 
to tackle, it's an easier target to aim at. I'm not saying it's easy to do, it's difficult to do good SEO work, but it's an easier target to aim at because it, it can be easily measured. You just look at your traffic and say, okay, more traffic, uh, more profit. It's that easy. But uh, to me, it's, I, I try to coin the term um, SEO procrastination, right? It's doing meaningless SEO technical stuff to try to avoid more, more meaningful work, which is to improve the design on your website, to think about what your target audience is, uh, how to position yourself in the industry, things like that. That's my position with SEO, and I, I have to refuse SEO audits for photographers because they need to do more important work first. Right. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's kind of this thing, like, you could rank number one for every topic and keyword that you want to rank well for but if somebody comes to your site and they're just confused and the, or the mm -hmm. site's hideous um or let's say you know uh, one of the one of the um one of the big things with with wordpress or just web design in general is does uh websites themes wordpress themes they usually have tons of customization for colors and it's great because you can make basically any design you want by changing this a color right but but at the same time your cust you know uh, at, let's say imagely themes right so the customer can go ahead and they can they can they could just make it bright purple and orange right next to each other and then you know now they just ruined a beautiful design right so um in some ways uh it's great it's great to have customization in some ways um it actually could cause more 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 problems and if somebody if you're ranking well, if somebody comes to your site and they're seeing bright purple next to bright orange and it's just a pastel or neon <laughs> website, whatever, you know, it could, it could be such a turnoff and, and you won't get the customers even though you have the good SEO, yeah, right? So it's um, in, I think that's where the fine line comes terms, in. If you, if you call it a funnel, I'm not fond of this term, but it's the same thing. They have a leaky <laughs> funnel, right? They try right. to put more people at the top which is what SEO is supposed to help with. But then the website is just horrible in yep. many other ways and they're losing. And that's where yeah. I feel UX, user experience, comes into play. And I don't think it's separate from SEO. In fact, all the signals that Google is giving to the industry is that SEO is actually good UX. If you do that, your website right, will rank right. better because, and Google takes notice of yeah. all the browsing behavior, the browsing habits that your users have on your website. It takes notice and then it ranks you better. But it's not just a number yeah. you can track and try to optimize. So it's more intangible. That's why people avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like a good example of this is Google is now in a mobile first search platform right so they're going to rank people or sites better that are ready for mobile and um so that's a that's a user experience thing right somebody comes to your site and they're on an iphone or an android phone and and your site looks like it's a desktop computer and super tiny it's not going to work well um it's not going to work well as a as a conversion process and and whatnot and then in turn yeah. will potentially rank lower um and one of the things related to mobile and just user experience in general are fast loading images. And we uh, here at Imagely, we've done extensive testing of the best image compression plugins for WordPress, as well as standalone apps for, uh, at least for Mac. I don't have a Windows computer to test that, but um, we've come to find that JPEG Mini is the best for desktop for a combination of compression and image quality. But for WordPress, Imageify and ShortPixel are by far the best for for, for WordPress plugins. And I'm curious of what your thoughts are on uh, image optimization, whether it's in general or, or plugins yeah, or I'm, other I'm software recommendations. I'm a big fan of uh, both ShortPixel and Imagify. I use them both, uh, I mean, one of them. Um, and I'm a big proponent of image optimization because we're talking about photography websites. They're always image heavy. Performance is such a big factor these days. And I think you'd be, Kind of 
hitting two birds with one stone because you're improving SEO as well. Google has confirmed that it's a ranking factor and also user experience on mobile to on desktop everywhere. Website should, should load fast. And it's just that photographers are sometimes, um, they care too much about, okay, visual impact. Images should be large and beautiful and as high quality as possible, but the website performance suffers. And it's not that difficult to do. There are some plugins to help with, like the ones you mentioned. They take a lot of the work uh, from the photographer. Uh, they, they really, th that's why I'm, I'm a fan of WordPress for this. Uh, we can name many platforms for photography websites that for which you can't, you cannot really do too much about in terms of image optimization. They come as they come, right? Uh, Photo Shelter, Smug Mug, uh, Squarespace, uh, Wix. They have some recommendations on their help pages but you can't do too much. Whereas with WordPress and the plugins, well, you can do lazy loading. So images that are below the fold, they load uh, asynchronously. Um, you can generate next gen images, WebP versions of images and deliver them automatically. Right. Um, you can limit image dimension. So when you try to upload a high-res image, the site limits it to 2,000 pixels or however much you set it automatically so you don't overwhelm the server yep. and things like that. All done with a plugin behind the scenes. That's why I'm a fan of WordPress. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I was actually going to bring up the whole WebP thing because, um, you know, so for anybody who doesn't know what WebP is, it's basically, um, I, did Google make it? Do you know, if, is it Google who made it or it was just an um, open source? Thing? I don't know if they made it, but they, they recommended. Mm. I think it's becoming the winner in the industry. Yeah, they recommend. Yeah. 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 So WebP, if you're familiar with like, let, let's say, uh, I'll just compare it to something everybody's probably familiar with. Let's say you uh, have an iPhone and in your iPhone, in your camera app, you can now set it to save as Apple's, um, their, their space, their file optimized space saving file type instead of a JPEG. This is basically the same thing, but for the web. And if you turn this on inside of Imageify or ShortPix or any image compression plugin that offers this, you can actually have it display the WebP version for when the browser supports it or the JPEG version when the browser does not support it. And by the way, I think even PNGs can be converted to WebP files as well. So it's not just JPEGs, but the beautiful thing is your site will load faster with WebP and your, your site visitors won't see a quality loss just because the file type is just better optimized for a smaller size. Um, and, the, and, yeah, and that's really I, the simplest way I, to put I it. Just, yeah. <laughs> but, I, I but, just add that for browsers yeah, that um, are not WebP capable, like Internet Explorer and I think Safari too, they still get the regular JPEG version. Right. And also when the plugin tries Correct. to convert it to WebP and the outcome is not smaller, the, convert, the optimization doesn't work, it's, it cancels it, it still delivers the smaller file. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Um, and so, so the browsers, yeah. I think Firefox supports it. I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure it does. Um, Chrome, Google Chrome, of course does. And for, for a Windows users, if you are a fan of, of Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge, the new Microsoft Edge, which is now built mm -hmm. on Google's Chromium platform, will also support it. So now uh, on Windows, you've got either Chrome or 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 the new Microsoft yeah, Edge. Yeah, that, that's that a longer discussion that. because so that's a beautiful the thing. Opera browser is also on Chromium now. So basically, all of the mm -hmm. web's browsers will kind of be on the same standard, which is both good <laughs> and bad. It's kind of like a mon monopoly. But for yeah, me, yeah. as a web designer, it's better because. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, easier to, yeah. to design yeah. across cross platform. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I have a love hate relationship with Google Chrome. I love it because of how much it allows me to do. I hate it because it is so super resource intensive and that drives me bonkers. Like every extension you add, it's running a, a, like a mini app in the background all the time. Um, and Whenever that, I hear I, I can't someone complain so, about browsers, um, I remind them of Internet Explorer 6 <laughs> and. So don't complain. Yes. Yeah. Or, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Or what was well, it Netscape? Yeah. Netscape was that what the yeah. the one that? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I mean, you can even go back. Like AOL's built-in yeah, browser so that was pretty bad too. Yeah. Um. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Um. So, um. So many photographers blog for the sake of blogging with no regard for what they're actually publishing. Like, for example, a hundred photos from a wedding, which there's like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of value in there because you're showing your work, but a hundred photos is going to slow down your site big time. And also there really is very little value because you can show five and you're of the best from the wedding. It'll do just as good as a hundred from a wedding, but um, they don't usually think of the positive or negative impact from these. And they think that no matter what, a blog post helps them, helps their SEO, helps whatever. Um, can you share some thoughts on, on a sustainable blogging practice? That's a good practice? question. Um, blogging, yeah, I'd say it doesn't always help if photographers don't do it right. Um, mistakes I've seen are maybe f some photographers are blogging only for themselves, which is bad because then it becomes kind of an online journal with irrelevant content and just random photos. Or I've noticed they're trying sometimes to blog only for SEO purposes uh, instead of trying to provide value for their audience. And that right. type of text becomes overly optimized. It, become, it sounds fake. It's not shareworthy and so forth. Um, the example you gave with photographers like dumping 100 photos in a blog post, um, I think that that's mainly used in the wedding photography industry. Yes. Yeah, and then you scroll <laughs> yes, down is. a lot and uh, just as a simple user experience trick would be to have some sort of gallery there with thumbnails and you can click on them to open in a light box view as a slideshow. At least you don't have to scroll all the way down. Yes. And another big mistake is the main blog index page shouldn't be all the, all the blog posts, one below the other, full content. They should be just excerpts of the blog post. So it's, yeah. But uh, yeah. back to blogging in general, it's, it takes time. It's not a straightforward practice. That's why people avoid it. Uh, many photographers told me they don't have time to blog. It's, it's too intensive. But I guess it, there's also some fear involved over there and they don't realize how it can help them. And I think blogging is useful in two ways. One, for photographers selling services, it's kind of a direct sales strategy, like they write blog posts, but they mention their services in there. They explain what they can do or um, use some storytelling in there, not just dumb photos in, in a list. And that, that way they promote their own services. That's kind of a di direct method. Or if the blog posts are on other topics, it's kind of an indirect marketing tactic because it just inspires trust, right? You know, on the web, you might need five or 10 occurrences of your brand for your audience before they rem remember you and they think of you. Um, so just getting more out there for consistency, it's indirectly helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, regarding the, the blog art, uh, index page, um, I want to just point out that most, most, because not all, but most WordPress themes now will give you an option. Um, I would say most modern, you know, updated all the time <laughs> WordPress themes uh, will give you the option to either take it from a, Sort of, sort of standard blog format to a beautiful um, image rich, mm -hmm. excerpt rich, oh. um, yeah, well designed a, a index. grid so. of blog posts or something like that. Yeah. 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 So, um, no matter where you are in the world, uh, and you and I are in two very different places of the world, <laughs> there is another photographer a mile or less away that does exactly what you do no matter what type of photography you do there's someone who does the same exact thing potentially using using the same exact locations as well you share clients locations and many times even the same equipment and software so how do you recommend for photographers to differentiate themselves in their in their well, saturated market the first thing is to not try to differentiate themselves by price <laughs> 
this is, as Seth Godin put it, the race to the bottom, right? Um, you, you try to lower prices to try to outrank the competition. And that's not a good way. The solution in one word to me is positioning. It, it, it's it's maybe a vague word word for some people, but it's trying to find a way to differentiate yourself through some means. Now, in what way to differentiate? It's it, it's hard. To, this is a million <laughs> dollar question, right? Uh, it's it's hard to create your own style, right? To to become a, a famous photographer overnight. That's difficult. So. A, a simpler solution is to carve out a, a narrower uh, specialty for yourself, um, to try to find some sort of vertical or horizontal positioning for your business. Um, if, let's say, if you're a portrait photographer, you could try to only take portraits of pregnant mothers or only senior citizens, and that becomes your, your own niche, your own specialty, and you become an expert in that field or that's vertical positioning, right? If you target a specific type of audience. Horizontal positioning would be, let's say you're only shooting formal studio portraits for anybody, but in that style, or only group photos, group portrait photos. Uh, that's horizontal positioning. So trying to carve out some sort of niche for yourself where there's less competition, that that way you can you can get more more clients. Uh, I can give you more examples. So wedding photographers can only shoot gay weddings, for example, or they can uh, shoot only mm -hmm. weddings in a kind of a black and white cinematic look. I've seen photographers do that, and they're successful. Or if you're yep. if you're shooting architecture, why not own, become an expert in hotel chains and only do that or things like that? Try mm -hmm. to carve out a niche, and it's and it's easier. And you can do kind of a hybrid approach, both a vertical and a horizontal. It's it's more difficult, but it it, it can be done. And I think another approach uh, is to. Um, show the value that you have, not only differentiate yourself in what the ways that you explain, but also show the value that you, that you offer to your clients. So um, in, the ep in an episode I did with Chris Scott from Swift Galleries and the Printmaker System, uh, he talked about, and I think this is brilliant, I implemented in my own business in certain areas, but um, he's a big proponent of in-person sales. And he does this uh, to... to um, to to create beautiful wall art for wedding clients and so one way that you can add show your value add the value and show your value is to actually promote the fact that if you do wall art that you do wall art right that you can do this custom wall art to your clients actual walls and to show the value on your site besides in just text is that portfolio uh, uh, that's on that page showing your wall art is not just photos of your clients. It's not just your weddings, it's not just your families, whatever it is. It's actually photos of your clients' walls with your clients' photos on their walls. That is going to set yourself way above, at least in this genre, right? Um, if you do this sort of thing, this is gonna set yourself way above the person that's a mile away that just delivers digitals, that doesn't care about yeah, Prince that that's a all. great method. Right. It's, you're so. instantly more of an expert because it's a social proof, right? You can see the photos on their wall. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And if you're if you're just getting, let's say let's say you like this idea and you want to get going, um, you don't have to, and you don't have a client whose wall that you have, you know, actual examples on. You can use stock images and mock it up. It's not the end of the world if you do that. You can actually use something like Swift Galleries or Fundy Software or, or Sprout Studio, any of these um, systems that offer the mock-up function, and you can actually use their images that they have and just download it and put that on your site. They're, they're telling you to do this, actually. So it's not like you're doing this <laughs> illegally. You know, they're, they're telling you to do this. This is how you're going to sell. So um, anyway, if you, if you don't already have examples, you have an option to, uh, to create one. So. Um, so, um, I want to, I want to, before we close up, I want to see if there's anything else you'd like to, to share, um, about anything we talked about or anything else that um, we haven't brought up yet. 
I don't know. I guess um, when I'm working with photographers, um, I do consulting sometimes, and we usually end up talking about intangible stuff, not technical stuff at the end of the calls, because I, I notice they get stuck with fear, with how they how they show themselves, they feel they don't have a voice, uh, they lack courage to try something new, but uh, I don't know, that's really difficult to deconstruct now. Um, yeah, it's, it's, still, it's still a hard business because of all the competition, it takes courage, but that's why to try to differentiate yourself in some way helps. Otherwise, it's just a saturated market and all the photographers are, I feel are suffering, that's the main idea I see in all my consulting calls. They're, they're sighing. They're, it's, it's difficult because cheaper photographers are around the corner. It's, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, th that topic, the saturated market topic, and the, and the, the photographers in your saturated market mm -hmm. that are lowballing their prices is a topic that I have been talking about with uh, many photographers and web designers um, <laughs> for the for the past couple of weeks um, in various calls and and um, and whatnot. And um, it's an interesting topic that I don't think there. Um, I, I, it might be obvious, but I don't think there's one um, one answer, one solution to this problem. Uh, I think that as an industry the photographers who care more about this problem need to need to have these discussions more often to find all the solutions um, and heck make a list of all the solutions because you know um, it, it's 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 so tricky uh, and, and I feel like this problem will never go away so all we can do is constantly step up and step up and step up and and rise above all these other people who um, are making it harder on us to for there's and there's more than enough business for for um for for the people who want to sell a little and do a high volume versus you know a good a good volume and and make more money yeah, per but, session but, so but they um, need to deconstruct their business to try to change the path of their business um actually I, i'm doing a big research project um still in the works i'm trying to review the top 100 most popular photography websites out there right so all the household names that everyone mm -hmm. knows about and tracking various stats in a big spreadsheet and those websites have huge mistakes on them right really broken pages poor seo poor performance yet they're still hugely popular why so don't yeah. obsess over technical stuff that much when you're going in the wrong direction yep. yeah yeah i can't wait to see that yeah i, <laughs> I, can't I wait was to hoping see that. that research would, great. would tell people hey most famous photographers are doing this you should do the same but it it, it ends up being yeah, Despite it's it's showing the opposite. This, you can be successful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's so funny. You know, um in, in, in at Imagely, we are constantly because we're, you know, we're um we're in a pretty competitive business as well. And um we're constantly reviewing how we rank for certain keywords and, and for certain brands of ours and certain products of ours. And it's so interesting when we see competition that are actually doing things that Google says will get you banned from Google and they're ranking number one, <laughs> like, you know, so it's, it's, it's what, what are, we're, we're constantly examining, what are they doing besides this one shady thing that they should be banned for? How are they still ranking number one? What are they doing that we could um, replicate and then do better? Um, so I feel like um, th that, it, that is something that you shouldn't just look at the SEO. You have to look at everything else that's going on. Um, they could be doing one little thing for user experience that is making them um, exactly. above, right? Uh, in, in ranking wise, at least. <laughs> Business wise, they probably are not doing as well, but, but yeah, ranking wise, they're doing something they're doing to game well, so. the system, um, but yeah, it, it won't last long yeah. if they're doing shady stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Unf yeah, unfortunately, it's been like 10 years of this. Uh, it's kind of crazy, almost 10 years, I guess. Um, so, 
uh, I want to say thank you, Alex, for joining today. I'm glad that we got you on and that um, we got to sh- you got to share some of your insights with the listeners and viewers. Um, so I'm going to put every place to find you and, of course, your blogging course in the show notes. But if you can tell the listeners the absolute best place well, to find more information about you. Well, all of my content is on my website, foregroundweb.com, F-O-R-E, groundweb.com. That's where I have all my free articles, my newsletters, some freebies, and they can see my web design services if they need kind of one-on-one help. Awesome. So you can find the show notes, where to find Alex at imlishly.com slash podcast slash 97. And don't forget to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Google Play, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time. You've been listening to the WordPress Photography Podcast. To listen to other episodes and to subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more, please visit imagely.com forward slash podcast. 